Hi there. Okay, so we're back, and now we're actually inside. So we are in a standard Chicago apartment, as you'll see. Um, we have a very lovely uh, set of south-facing windows behind me here, and it's approximately 11.45 in the morning on a very sunny and clear day here in the city. So we've got uh, decent light coming through the window. What Janae and I are going to do is we're going to show you examples of how you can photograph with what you have available to you. And so having windows and having the sun can be really helpful. And we're going to show you a few simple techniques that you can do with household items and things that you can acquire very easily that aren't super expensive that you can use to help make really successful photographs inside. This will especially become handy to know and give you a lot to think about as the weather gets cooler and the light starts to change. We are still in late summer light here and we have probably another four, four weeks of this before it starts to change closer to winter light. So Janae is going to sit down and she's gonna be our model here. And she is going to show you some examples of how the light can change dependent on your physical position. Uh, as you can see, there are massive windows here on this side of me. And just like what we were looking at with the studio light, it's really going to make a difference depending on where my body is facing in uh, relation to my light source or my window source. So. If I'm, I'll take this with me here. <laughs> if I am fully facing the window, you're gonna see this really nice light sort of fill my whole face. You can do some really sort of dramatic, you know, experiment with, uh, with posing here. If it's bright, you might have your subject close their eyes. Um, and then as I slowly turn away from the light source, similar to our guide on lighting position, uh, the light is essentially lighting the back of me instead of the front. But this whole time, based on my pose, uh, I can really experiment with where that light source is gonna be. So when you're working with a subject or you're photographing a parent or a friend, um, make sure to try a, different, uh, a couple of different uh, lighting position photographs because sometimes something that they're wearing might catch light in an interesting way depending on the direction where they're facing or uh, sometimes something in their hair might catch light a little bit differently. It's just good to know kind of how far away you are from that light source and then how much your body is facing that light source. Cool. Great. Thank you so much. So what I'm going to do now so I have my uh, I have my my DSLR and I've got my um, I've got my 55 my 55 prime lens on on my DSLR. Um, I've got my ISO set to 1600 because I want to be able to shoot handheld inside with the available light. Um, you can you can see from the pan that Janae did um, a few minutes ago. We don't have any extra studio lights or anything set up in the room, it's all natural light. So I've got a higher ISO, I've got my shutter speed at 125, and that is gonna allow me to shoot right in the middle at a good medium aperture at, at F8. And I'll bracket a little bit here and there, um, and I'll, I'll add more exposure in, all right, so that I'm getting my, my, my coverage for, for proper raw exposure. Um, the nice thing is, is that this, is still technically a controlled lighting situation for the most part. As, <laughs> as I keep talking, the light is shifting, so I'm gonna wrap this up pretty quickly, but um, we will do, I'll be able to do a test shot because the light in the room will be relatively consistent. So when you're working in a, in a situation like this, you can use the gray card and the color checker card to make test shots. Every few minutes though, um, probably I'd say every, at least every 10 minutes, you'd probably want to do another, um, another color checker control shot, um, because the light, the light will have, sh has, will have shifted. Um, but depending on how quickly you're shooting, you can get good batches of, um, good batches of shots together in a situation like this. Okay. Uh, Jordan, let me ask you, um, a quick question sure. too. If I don't have a color checker card or a gray card to, to check out what my, um, color balance might be, what are some other options for me if I'm at home and I forgot my gray card or I just don't have one with me? Well, anything that you can find in your house that's actually kind of a medium neutral, 
um, would work would work pretty well. Like where you're sitting right now, you happen to be sitting on a pretty neutral gray couch with a really nice neutral pillow. <laughs> so if you didn't have a gray card or a color checker card, you could use that pillow. The pillow would work just fine. You just want to make sure that the pillow's bathed in the light that you're photographing in. Um, and it can be like it can be that easy. Um, I have I, I you know I've been in situations before where I don't have um, a card, and I've used um, I've used blue jeans. That's worked pretty well. I used to have a jacket that I would wear when I when I would shoot. Um, that was it was green, but it was close enough to middle gray, especially if I was shooting in black and white, that I could use it to make um, to make light readings from. So, the more you think about it, and the more you look around your house, you'll be surprised what you what you can find uh, in your house that's actually pretty neutral. Okay, yeah. all right. So let's make some pictures. So this is the bounce card. It's just a big piece of foam core um, that has some of Janae's stage information on the back. <laughs> Typical household material. So I'm gonna set this up in the, um, in the stand next to her. And if you keep a close eye on the right side of her face as she looks into the camera, you'll see that you're gonna see that the, the darker side of her face will start to fill in very, very gently with a nice, with a nice even white bounce card. It's a super simple way to elevate your, your photographs and um, kind of add that next layer of both professionalism and also really demonstrate an understanding of being able to modify and manipulate light. Let's do a comparison shot. We're going to stop here. <laughs>